Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Photoshop Friday, and uh, I've been away for a few weeks, as you have probably noticed. I've been traveling a lot, and then obviously dealing with this whole coronavirus thing. Uh, so no, I did not get sick. Luckily, crisis avoided, but like many of you, I'm trapped at home and am dealing with uh, all kinds of work that I have to catch up on, and obviously new projects I'd like to start. Uh, so one of those things is obviously getting back to videos and keeping those of you who are also stuck at home uh, entertained. So uh, we're going to work on a bit of a more, I want to say, stylistic approach to Photoshop today on how to kind of give your images a specific look or feel. Now there's a lot of tools in Photoshop to do that, and we're going to cover probably one of the easiest ones today that makes a significant impact very early on. Now this tool does have some advanced uses, and I'm going to go through uh, kind of the basics for it today, but you're going to see that even with just those basics, you can do some pretty amazing things. Uh, so that tool is the gradient map that is different than the gradient tool, uh, which you see over here. We're going to talk about that another day because that can also do some pretty interesting things. Now the gradient map is found here. Uh, so this is your adjustment layers. Uh, and when it pops up, it's going to look like it just does some random thing. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, this scale. Uh, so basically on one side you have black and on the other side you have white. And what we're going to do is it's going to map the darkest part of the image to whatever color is on this side and the lightest color of the image to whatever's on this side. So that sounds pretty simple and it really is, uh, but what you can do with that is pretty funky. Uh, so to start with, if you click on the gradient, it will bring up the gradient editor and you have some, some uh, shortcuts you can pick from here. There's a bunch of them that come loaded with Photoshop. You can make your own or you can import others. Um, I'm all for adventuring. So you might try some of the funky ones and maybe you'll make a happy accident and discover something cool. Um, or you can always just default to working with it manually until you develop a style or a feel for the tool. Uh, so to change the darkest part here, we just click on the black color here and then go down and click on the color. Uh, this will bring up your color picker. And uh, for the darkest part of the image, uh, as you know from my feed, I tend to like blues here. So I'm just going to pick a blue. And this is going to look really weird initially, but I don't really worry about that. So I'm just going to pick a blue. And then for my highlights, I like kind of a skin tone. So I'm going to go here and pick just something at random. I'm not really going to worry about how correct it is right now. I'm just going to pick something um, like this. So uh, this in itself is probably not the prettiest thing you've ever created in your life, uh, but you can do some cool things with it at this point. So first of all, the easiest thing you can do is just simply lower the opacity. So as you lower the opacity, you're allowing the base color of the image to kind of show through uh, the gradient map. So here we're at about half, and now it's looking kind of interesting. Like it has a definite feel to it. And note that there is no longer a true black because the blackest part of the image is mapped to this blue part here. And there's no true white either because the whitest part of the image is mapped to this side of the gradient. That's why they call it a gradient map. Now, uh, sometimes you may find this is a little wonky and that's because you need to reverse it. Uh, not in this case, obviously that goes uh, to Helen a Handbasket, but uh, this gives you an idea of how the tool is used. Okay, so let's take the opacity back up to 100%, but let's play with blending modes. And I really like the soft light blending mode. So the soft light blending mode adds a bit of punch to the image. You can see this is a little bit too much for this, uh, but it does give us a real feel for how to modify this image and what it does. So before and after, you can see it has done uh, some significant work, cooler shadows, warmer highlights, and uh, now because it's a blending mode, it means that this map isn't exactly being used the way it's intended uh, because the blending mode changes that. And you can play with the other blending modes too. I mean, there's a lot of things to be discovered in here. Uh, and I experiment uh, all the time. So I would wholeheartedly endorse the same thing from you. Uh, but I tend to like it in normal with a lower opacity. This is the, typically how I use this to create kind of a sense of tone to an image. Uh, this can also be used uh, for advanced techniques such as uh, skin. So you could map a gradient map just to the skin of an area. Obviously, you'd have to um, make a mask so that only skin is selected and then make a gradient map that does the darkest skin tone to the lightest skin tone uh, so that all the skin kind of has the same tone. Uh, now, I don't tend to really use it that way, uh, but that is a way that you'll see some people talk about uh, skin retouching for tone correction. Um, I'm talking more about artistic use right now. Uh, so let's go and play with some of the ones that come with it. This is a map that I really like, that blue to uh, kind of the orangish skin tone, uh, but there's a bunch that come with it. Uh, obviously black and white, but we've already talked about black and white and how I prefer to do that. 
But again, this is a stylistic approach. Uh, so if we just pick black and white and then change our blending mode back to normal uh, at 100%, you can see what that looks like. And we can go ahead and change this by adding additional steps in here. Uh, so if we want to, we can do some funky things uh, to modify how fast this ramps or how slow this ramps. Now, uh, not to say you're going to get a positive result every time, but it's pretty cool to be able to go in and, and modify an image this way. Uh, so let's go back to, um, let's go to this purple orange ramp here and lower the opacity a bit. Then we can go and modify that ramp. And again, you can pick a spot, click, and then we can change what color we want and where we want that to appear somewhere on this ramp. So all the grays here, for example, would be mapped to a black here. Uh, and just mess with this. I mean, there's just so much you can do in here. And you come up with something that just kind of sings to you. Um, you can also change how fast it transitions from one color to the next by using these. And again, to add more stops, you just click and it will go ahead and insert that color. Uh, and I'm, uh, again, wholeheartedly endorsing you playing around in here. Yes, you're going to make some train wrecks, but that's okay. That's part of the uh, excitement of using the tool. And then those happy accidents that wander around uh, are really the whole reason that you're here. Uh, because you may come up with something that is your own thing and everyone's like, oh, how did you edit that? And you could, you know, you could tell them or not tell them. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is, a, this is a quick tutorial today. Uh, this is from uh, Project Obscura, if you were lucky enough to win tickets for that in the uh, Nevada desert a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, sponsored by H&H &H Color Lab. And uh, we had a wonderful time here. And this is uh, Winter is her name. And she did a, an amazing job. And uh, that dress was just spectacular on her. Uh, so shout out to them for doing a uh, great job with that event and for the whole Team Simcata that helped with that and helped organize it and keep everything kind of sane. <laughs> it was an amazing time and looking forward to more images from this uh, that pop up in my feed. So if you uh, like the video, please leave me a comment below and uh, we'll go ahead and get some more videos going since uh, we're kind of all stuck at home. And let me know if there's something you're having trouble with specifically in Photoshop and I'll try and get a video done on that subject uh, so we can kind of get past that and work on more tools like this that kind of add to our artistic library. Until next time, uh, take care and stay safe.